Hi folks, this example is one where we are going to do a mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry problem. The key here is that in order to compare one chemical in a reaction to another chemical, we always have to do it in terms of moles. So because we start with a mass of our substance, the very first thing we're going to need to do will be to convert that to moles so that then we can do our comparison, right? And that's where the stoichiometry, that comparison of mole ratios is going to come into play. So let's take a look at how we're going to solve this problem. Given the reaction shown below, if 15.5 grams of copper 2 oxide reacts completely with aluminum, determine the mass of aluminum oxide produced. So remember that in any stoichiometry problem, the first thing we always want to do is we want to balance our chemical equation. So if I balance my chemical equation, taking a look at how this works, I need three oxygens, so I'm going to need a three there, which I have to balance the coppers, and then I can put a two in front of aluminum to get my balanced chemical equation. So we've got it all balanced. Now we can look at solving this. So let's pull out the information we have in the question. Our mass of copper two oxide is 15.5 grams, and we want to find the mass of aluminum oxide. So I'm just going to jot that down so that I know what it is. Now remember, we have to do this comparison as a mole to mole comparison. So we're going to have to go from mass to moles. And in order to do that, we're going to need molar masses. So let's jot them down as well. Using your periodic table, one copper and one oxygen would make a molar mass of 79.55 grams per mole. And that will let us find moles of copper two oxide. From our moles of copper two oxide, we can find moles of aluminum oxide. That's where the mole ratio will come into play. And once we know the moles of aluminum oxide, using the molar mass of aluminum oxide, we can find the mass. And again, our periodic table is where we look to get the info for the aluminum oxide molar mass. It's 101.96 grams per mole. So that's the information that we have in the question. Now we just need to actually solve it. So let's just look at those steps one more time. In order to do that, the first thing we're going to do is go from mass to moles, and that's going to involve our molar mass. That's the first calculation we need to do. The second calculation is to go from moles of one substance to moles of the other, and that's where our mole ratio comes into play. The last thing we want to find is the mass of the aluminum oxide, and that's where we'll take the moles of aluminum oxide and the molar mass and we'll do a calculation. So we've got sort of three parts to solving this particular problem. So let's start by finding the mass, uh, using the mass to get moles of copper to oxide. So we know that the moles of copper two oxide equals the mass divided by the molar mass. So when we plug that in, it's gonna be 15.5 grams divided by 79.55 grams per mole, which would give us a number of moles of 0 0.1948460 moles. Now that I've calculated my moles of copper two oxide, my next step is to do the mole ratio. So our mole ratio, we want to find the moles of aluminum oxide. So we're going to set it up as the moles of copper to oxide times the ratio that we find in our balanced chemical equation. Remember, the one we want to find, the chemical we're trying to find, is on top. So that's going to be our one mole of Al2O3. And the one we are using to get there is on the bottom, so our three moles of CuO. So remember, those come from our balanced chemical equation, right? This is what allows us to compare one substance to the other. So I'm going to plug in my number, and I have to multiply that by one-third to get the moles of aluminum oxide which when we do that, 0 0.06494867 moles. So now we've got the moles of aluminum oxide. We have a molar mass. We can do the last step, which is to find mass 
of the aluminum oxide. And remember that to find mass, we are using our mole and molar mass calculation here. It's just rearranged, so it's moles times molar mass. So we are going to have 0 0.0649487 moles times 101.96 grams per mole. And when we find the mass, we're going to get 6.622166 grams. And thinking about significant digits, um, our data in our question, three significant digits, four significant digits, and five significant digits. And all the math we've done has been multiplication division. So it's going to be the smallest number of significant digits. So we are going to want an answer of 6.62 grams. That number has three significant digits. So that's our answer. I'm going to put a box around it. Yay. There we go. You could finish it off with a statement. And you're all set. Hopefully that helps with your mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry.